In this video, I am going to go over briefly the sales spreadsheet that I created to track my vintage online sales. I like spreadsheets because I can track everything, sort the data, and see everything all in one place. This is a spreadsheet I created with color coding, so I can see everything on one page at one glance. I know the status of my inventory. In order to track my inventory and sales, I created this spreadsheet with multiple columns and many rows for each item. These are typically one-of-a-kind items and require more tracking for myself, the seller, and also has a lot of information when it comes time to do taxes. First, I suggest sorting the data only one column at a time because you can easily mess up a spreadsheet like this. I also suggest backing up the document. Here I am using free Libre software. It is very much like Microsoft Excel and can open Excel documents. So I'm going to start here at the top. The itemized columns are as follows. Column A is the year sold. Column B is the exact date sold, so I can sort it by tax year. Column C is the purchase year, and column D is the exact purchase date. I have hidden a couple of columns that has information that I do not want to have on YouTube. I can expand or narrow these columns. I like the columns narrow as I like to see everything at the same time. Column F is my categories such as dishware, men's or women's items. These are typically clothing and accessories. I also have categories such as decor. So that is another way that I can sort the items in my inventory and see what is going on with my online store. Column G is the item for a description, including the brand, size, and it has basically the same information that goes in the title of a sales listing. The number purchased is usually one especially for resale or vintage items. But sometimes there are sets such as in dishware. As you can see here, this has two items. This set of dishes were sewed together for $3.99. I have a tag column in case I want to sell them individually. I can just add another row. and lists the item as two individual items. For example, I can list the one dish for a cost of $1.99. I can list the dishes separately, sell them separately with different dates and possibly different retail amounts. This is the discount or notes column. So I can add details if the item was found on a sales day, for example, or I can add notes for the individual items. This is the retail column, and you can see here the green indicating that the item was sold.
this total column is for the amount received from the buyer, the retail plus any shipping fee paid by the buyer. The gross column is for the total in the total row minus the amount in the cost of goods row. In other words, the amount received minus the amount paid for the item. The formula entered is calculating automatically. Once the correct formula is added with the column and row numbers included in the formula bar, I do not have to calculate it for any item on my spreadsheet. Next, this is the cost to me to ship the item to the buyer. I have two fee columns here, one for eBay's managed payments and also a column for when I was on PayPal. The total fees can include fees for promoted listings, for example, or it can go in a separate column, which is another option with these spreadsheets. I can widen this column if necessary. I like to see everything all at once, so the columns are pretty narrow on my spreadsheet. This comes in handy for my workflow and also in case the IRS has any questions. Here I have two columns, one for does this match and one column for the payout received. The formula is in place to check that the amount paid out is correct. The formula for the match column is in place adding together columns for each row. The payout amount I entered individually from the payout transactions on eBay. The payout amount is the amount that goes to your bank. So the match column is automatically calculated. So I can easily verify that the payout amount is correct. The unsold items are in white and a negative in the parentheses on the spreadsheet as these are items that have not been listed or they have not been sold. The profit column also has a formula, columns W minus column Q minus column J. This last tax column is also for the taxes collected by eBay, which they do count in the total for the seller fees. They do pay the states for us, so sellers do not have to do this. But here, I haven't been consistent in filling out the tax amounts collected by eBay since it's low priority. The green is all the sold items, and I can sort by items sold only. Again, listed and all the yellow items that are listed are shown. When all is checked again, everything in the spreadsheet is on view. Row 11 is red because I had to cancel the sale and the refund was credited back to the buyer. The dollar amount goes into my tax year information, so this provides clarity around these types of issues. The rows 12 to 15 are left white because these items are not listed yet. A column can also be added to show the location, box number, or shelf number for the item in inventory storage.
When I purchased an item, I add it to the spreadsheet as soon as I buy it. When the item is sold, the first thing I do is search the spreadsheet and change the color to green. My spreadsheet also sums up the amounts at the bottom. I will show these and scroll to the bottom of the spreadsheet. So my spreadsheet is long, of course. It does take time to do the data entry, but it is necessary because it is confusing and it is much too detailed to work without one. This is a negative amount because this is inventory that I still have and have not sold yet. And this amount, it should match, but it's not matching because I haven't filled in all the data for the formulas to work, such as what I talked about earlier. These are the amounts for all the columns. I haven't summed up this PayPal column because it is low priority since I am no longer using PayPal for my eBay sales. Here, the amount is the total spent on shipping cost. If you wanted to have a separate page for each tax year, it can be added here on the bottom. But I like to see it all on one page since many items I purchased in 2020 have sold in 2021. When it's time to do taxes, I can sort by tax year or for cost of goods purchased or for the gross amounts or for the net amounts or any deductions such as shipping. So that is an intro to my spreadsheet. If you have any questions, comment below. Thanks for watching.